one of the things that's worth noting here is you pretty much already know an awful lot about structures. The problem usually is that you have to talk about structures in the language of engineers in order for it to make sense on the exam. So there's all sorts of things that you already do all the time, you already make decisions about all the time that are essentially the same set of issues. And there's just sort of a process that has to be gone through in order to connect those understandings with the way that we normally talk about these things. So let me just give you a quick uh, goofy example. Let's say that there you are standing on the side of a creek uh, and your picnic basket is on the other side of the creek. So you want to go get your picnic basket and you happen to have, uh, the creek has a uh, span of let's say, I don't know, about 23 feet. Uh, and you happen to have a big board next to you that's 24 feet long. Uh, and so we have this big board and let's say it's a uh, two by, uh, how about 10, two by 10. So I'm going to lay that board flat across so I can walk across it. Uh, now that would be certainly very nice for walking across because I have a nice uh, uh, wide uh, nominal 10 inch width to walk across. But if I'm 24 feet uh, in, in span, 23 feet in span, and I'm out in the middle of that, uh, of that uh, span, and I have it in the shallow orientation, that beam is going to deflect a huge amount. It's going to really be hard to walk on. It's going to start to, to really bounce a lot, uh, which is sort of clear. It's sort of obvious, right? Because you already know that for something to span, what you want is depth. So if I take that same piece of wood, that same dimensional lumber, and instead orient it vertically, so now it's the 2 by 10 uh, with the 10 going vertically, uh, while I would have a very hard time uh, being like on a balance beam on that little tiny width walking across um, that, uh, that creek, and I quite likely would fall in because I'm not very good at balancing, it would deflect way, way less, right? Just shooting across that, that, uh, that little creek you already know that, right? You already understand that the, by placing it with the uh, vertical axis uh, being the, the longer axis, that that's gonna be much stiffer and stronger of a, of a board. And if we went instead even to say a one by 10 instead of a two by 10, well, the one by 10 probably wouldn't even survive you walking across it. It would break somewhere in the middle. That's a very, very long one by 10. The same material, the same cross-sectional area has a dramatically different effect if I orient it in different ways. So this is sort of one of those fundamental things that you already understand, but this is played out through a series of formulas and terminology that we use in engineering in order to make that clear and to be able to make logical calculations from. For example, um, thinking about uh, the allowable fiber um, stress in bending, so the F sub B, that's allowable bending stress. That is that essentially that same concept of that just uh, deflection and how far will it go and how much can, can you do before it starts to actually tear itself apart. Um, the I is the moment of inertia, and the moment of inertia is a way of thinking about the cross-sectional shape of the member, and it's trying to sort of get at that if I have the majority of my material as far away from the neutral axis as possible, uh, so uh, a lot of material up at the top and a lot of material down at the bottom, but make that as far apart as possible, right? I'm going to have a much higher moment of inertia. So that's essentially what we were just doing. We were just placing the 2x10 uh, vertically, and that was in order to get us a better moment of inertia. So again, this is something you already understand, 
It's just a matter of kind of placing the terminology with the concept. The section modulus is another one of those things that uh, relates to a cross-sectional area of a spanning member. And so again, is about shape, is about understanding that depth gives you um, a, a better uh, spanning capacity. And then there's E, and E is the modulus of elasticity. What that one is about is not talking about the shape, that's talking about the material itself. So in this context, if we had really, really kind of just junk wood being used, very uh, fast growth, not very uh, strong wood, a kind of weed tree type wood, then I'm gonna have a much lower modulus of elasticity uh, than I would if I was using, say, Douglas fir or something that's a much more structural species of wood. And so by understanding the material itself, not the shape, uh, then that also plays a role into how well this little bridge will work for our purposes to get over to the picnic basket. So again, um, there's nothing rocket science in here. This is all pretty straightforward stuff. It's just trying to put the correct terminology to the concept so that you feel comfortable making decisions and moving forward with how you can answer questions, but also just sort of play out different issues uh, in, in the work to be logical um, about the real world aspect, but also fit to the structures speak and structures terminology. Imagine for a moment you have a chunk of wood and it has a certain cross-sectional area and it's whatever length long it is. Uh, and I say, okay, I really want to take this same amount of wood. I, I, this is how much I can uh, afford, um, but it's not spanning far enough. I don't, I'm not getting the, uh, enough of the allowable bending. Um, I'm not getting enough F sub B uh, in order to, to do the, the job that I need it to do. What can I do? Well, I could actually cut that piece of wood in half, separate it, and then find some sort of web to uh, hold them apart from each other. And again, all I'm doing is getting that depth, which is increasing my moment of inertia. So I'm uh, using the, the moment of inertia as a way to say, well, wait, if I can get a larger moment of inertia by getting the deeper um, member, then that is telling me that I can uh, span this farther, I can, uh, have it be much stiffer in that process to go across. So here is an example of being economical where I can take the same amount of wood uh, and make it work much more effectively. Now, is it wood or I could do it, same idea with uh, steel, right? All of those are based on that same concept. That's always about kind of getting that moment of inertia to be a, a stiffer, larger moment of inertia. The modulus of elasticity, again, is about the material itself. So as we go along, you should be thinking about these things not as abstract formulas, but as ways of describing, different ways of describing uh, things that you pretty much already know.